Hey, this is Ian Golden for DJ Tech Tools, and today we're going to run you through setting up your DJ MIDI controller. We're going to cover how to set up your sound card, how to import MIDI TSI files, and how to get everything set up so you can start rocking beats right away. As you start unpacking your VCI 100, you're going to find a couple important things in the box. Of course, you're going to have the controller. You're going to have a manual from the Vestax Corporation. You're also going to find the Tractor LE disc and a DJ Tech Tools USB cable. The first thing you want to do is run the Tractor 3 LE installation disc and install Tractor LE. If you want to use your controller right away, select the controller that you have from this drop down menu and LE will auto map the controls in the software to the controls on your hardware. You should know that the SE controls, however, require Tractor Pro. So we're going to go ahead and upgrade LE to Pro right away. To purchase the upgrade to Tractor Pro from Tractor LE, go to nativeinstruments.com, click on Shop, then click on DJ Line. At the bottom of the screen, you're going to see the Tractor Pro upgrade download. This Tractor Pro upgrade will get you from LE to Tractor Pro and allow you to install and use custom MIDI mappings like those found on djtechtools.com. Once you've upgraded Tractor 3 LE to Tractor Pro, you'll want to go into the Service Center and run that program to make sure that the latest version of Tractor is installed. This is where you'll do all future updates to your Tractor program to make sure that you're running the latest version. Now that we have Tractor Pro installed, we need to get some sound out of the speakers. Click over here into the Preferences window, which is something we're going to be visiting a lot. Go to your Audio Setup and select your built-in sound card. I'm going to use the built-in sound card just to get sound set up right away. Next, let's go to Output Routing. Here we've got the mixing mode set to internal, that means we're using Tractor's internal mixer, and we've got the output master set to output 0 and 1. That's left and right for your built-in sound card. Because your built-in sound card only has one pair of outputs, we only see 0 and 1. Now, because it's set to master, anything coming out of the main output of Tractor will be heard on the internal sound card of your computer. In order to use the headphone cueing function of Tractor, you're going to need to set up an external sound card like this Audio 4 DJ. If you own a multi-channel sound card like the Audio 4, you'll want to select it here. I've got the Audio Fire 2 from Presonus connected, so select that as my sound card. Then in output routing, we can assign which of these we want to go where. For instance, I would like my monitor to go out of 0 and 1, because I know that's where the headphone output's located. I'd like my master, which I'll connect to the speakers, to connect to outputs 2 and 3. Now I have split queuing set up, and anything that I send through the headphone queue or the headphone mix here will go through one channel, and the main speakers will go through another. Back in the audio setup tab, there's one important setting. It's the audio latency setting. I'm going to lower this as low as I can without starting to hear pops and crackles in audio playback. For now, just get it as low as possible without hearing any audible pops or clicks in the audio playback. We'll create another video later on how to fine tune your audio latency settings. Now let's go ahead and connect your MIDI controller. Most MIDI devices are plug and play, so if you plug them in, they should work right away. But the first place to check is this MIDI light here. If you see a blue light blinking, that means it's receiving MIDI transmissions from your controller or some device. We'll go into the Settings Preference window and then click on MIDI Setup to confirm what MIDI devices are connected. Here I've got my Vestax PC controller set on the MIDI input and on the MIDI output. Make sure they're both checked, otherwise it won't work the way it should. Next we're going to go into MIDI Mapping. This is where the controls on your controller are connected to the virtual controls in the software. There's nothing here, so your controller is not going to work at all. We need to either add some MIDI commands, which can be quite tedious, or go ahead and import a file that's already been created. DJI 100 owners need to go to djtechtools.com and click on the MIDI map tab. Here you'll find the latest TSI for VCI 100 and Tractor Pro. You can go ahead and sign up on the beta list to get updates when any changes are made to this file and download the file directly here. If you own another controller, you can go to our forum and check out the dedicated controller mapping section where you'll be able to download a wide number of mappings for different controllers. We've now reached the end of the video and you've set up your controller to work perfectly with Tractor Pro. 
If you're interested, you might want to check out the following videos which go into more detail on the performance functions of the VCI 100 SE. This video will walk you through the VCI 100 SE and this one will walk you through the sampler function. This video shows you how to set beat grids in Tractor Pro and this video will show you how to create cool dynamic buildups.